When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to AI Scouted on Anfield Index Pro. I'm Dave Hendrick, joined as always by Mr. Carl Matchett. How are you, sir? I am well, thank you. Ready for a brand new season just about and uh, just want to check that Guy has pressed record. Yeah, Guy, have you hit record there? No. (laughs) That's all right then. Uh, Right. So, Liverpool versus Ipswich. We previewed 19 of the 20 Premier League teams ahead of this season. The one that we didn't preview was, of course, Liverpool. So, we might as well have a chat now, Carl. So, nobody coming in the door as yet. Still expecting signings. Uh, it looks like Kvalic, um, Mamardashvili rather will be the first, assuming that one gets done. Did you ne- nearly get carried away with the Georgians there? I did nearly get very carried away with Georgians, yeah. Um, so I still think they will make signings for this season. I thought when Arna spoke about it today in his press conference, he made it clear that they are working to get players in. I think it will happen. But I think after what happened with Zubimendi, the fact that the club didn't want his name in the press and then obviously David Ornstein got it and was going to run the story and the club then just had to brief the rest of the local media that this is what they were doing. The deal falls apart and the club are left with some egg on their face. So I think they want everything under wraps moving forward. I don't think we'll hear much of anything until things are done. Um, But we have sold some players, Carl. And we've also, obviously, we've lost Thiago. We've lost Joel Matip. Not that they played a ton last year, but they were senior squad players. But Anderson Arroyo finally left the club. Billy Cometio left the club. Fabio Carvalho was sold to Brentford. And Bobby Clark is being sold to Red Bull Salzburg. It does also look like Ben Doak will leave on loan, though seemingly the club are open to a permanent deal there. And Stefan Besetic will leave on loan. No permanent deal possibilities on that one. What do you make of the squad right now as we sit here on the the 16th of August, Carl, with 15 days left in the window? Mostly fine. Um, I don't think that, you know, unless your expectation is that Liverpool immediately go toe-to-toe with Man City. Um, If if that's the case, then yes, I I fully agree that there are a couple of areas which need addressing. But mm, that isn't my expectation for this season. Uh, Unless, you know, points, deductions and all the rest of it come into play, which I'm not going to go into because that's just completely unknown pointless. So from a general footballing perspective, with it being the first year, under a new head coach and with us having tailed off for different reasons in the final quarter of last season, my expectation is that Liverpool's basically base level is third and second is definitely achievable this season. And then we'll see how many points we are sort of partway through the year, January transfer possibilities, all the rest of it. So with all that kind of factored in, I think the squad's in a fine place. It was pretty good last year. You know, nobody's Nobody's hidden this. It was a good squad. We were a good team. We're going to have a slightly different way of playing. And as I said, 
probably a month ago, maybe six weeks ago. If we get to this point, Liverpool make no changes. You can still make improvements because mm. we were way too open defensively last year at times. We were way yeah. too cavalier in midfield. We were not really there with the pressing system that we'd had. That was very hit and miss last year. So you can make coaching improvements. You can make tactical improvements. And that, this isn't even to lay everything at the feet of Jurgen Klopp. I think it was quite clear that he got way more out of the squad than might have been um, expected at times. And last year, for a port- portion of it, he did the exact same again. But towards the end of the season, similarly, undeniable that things could have been better. And maybe that's just a consequence of the year, the injuries, him departure, everything put together. doesn't matter what the reasons were now. It only matters that you can improve on that. And I do think that that's possible to do so with the exact same group. So I have no massive issue with where the, the team is. Like I could pick out a goalkeeper and back four that I like very, very much. I could pick out a midfield three and a front three that I think would work well as individuals and as pairings and all the rest of it. The thing where we expect improvement to come now, what we're looking for is the playing style on the ball and how we work off the ball. And Arna Slop in that regard is an unknown in this league with this group of players. I think he's in a fine spot though, so there's no reason to be that concerned, I don't think. Yeah, I I am largely in agreement with you. I do think, I think we underachieved last year. Now, there are obviously big factors for that. Number one, injuries. Probably the biggest factor. When you look at our, let's say our best 11. Okay, so Allison, Trent, Ebu, Virgil, Robbo, I suppose, just by default at left back. And then based on the last year, Endo, McAllister, Sabalzlai, Salah, Nunes, and Jota. Let's say that's the best 11 we had last year. So Virgil played 36 games, started 36 games. But when you look at the rest, Trent started 25 games. Ibu started 17. Robble started 18. Allison started 28, so he missed 10. Endo only started 20. Alexis started 31, played in 33. Zabozlai started 25, did play in 33, but missed 13 starts. Salah, 28 starts. That's very unusual for him. Played in 33 games, but only 28 starts. Nunes only 22 starts. And Diogo Jota only 14 starts, only 21 appearances. So, purely by keeping those players fitter and on the pitch more often, we should improve. I also think you can look at a lot of players in this squad from last season and suggest that they can play better than they were playing last year. They can be used better. I think Trent being used as a right back and not this hybrid midfield nonsense will be better. I don't think anybody could argue that Trent had a great season last year. Likewise, Ibu having to be centre back, right back and trying to progress the ball into midfield. He can be better. Andy Robertson was dreadful last year, so he can be better. Ali didn't have his best year. He can be better. We wasted Alexis for half the year in the sixth position. Play him a bit further forward, we saw what happened. So he can be better. Zabozlai can be better. Nunes can be better. I think Diaz and Gakbo can be better. Salah had a really poor end of the season, so we know there's a much higher level for Mo. Like... So if players can stay fit and Arna can use them in better ways and get them back to their peak capabilities, that's two significant ways to improve the team. And when he did his press conference today, these seemed to be what he was leaning into. You know, somebody asked him about not signing anybody and going backwards, and he basically said, if you have the same squad, does it mean you get worse? It, it it doesn't always. It shouldn't. And he's right. Like There's a lot more to be gotten out of that group of players from last season 
than what was gotten out of them. The style well, of play... I think that goes for any manager, for right? Hmm? They should go for any manager. If you can't get any more out of the group than you did last year, you're done as a coach, basically. Yeah, yeah well, that's, this is the thing. I mean, they didn't hire him to come in and do worse than Jurgen. You know, and, and like we can look back over Jurgen's tenure and there's a there are multiple seasons where he absolutely got everything possible out of the squad. But there's also a lot of seasons where he didn't. And I think if you look at the last four seasons of the club, we had three underperforming seasons. 2021, injuries, the big mitigation there. 2022-23, we were just dreadful, absolutely dreadful. And then last year, again, injuries, but also just poor use of players. Like McAllister as a six, Sabozlai as a donkey going box to box, not being used in the correct way. Diaz being coached out of the player he was when we got him into something else. Gakbo being used here, there and everywhere. Trent in that hybrid nonsense. Like, there's five that you could say should improve significantly just by being used better. So I do think there is significant improvement to come from this squad just with what they have there at the moment. And, you know, I see people having their meltdowns about, you know, oh, every other club is strengthening, every other club is doing this. You know, I saw someone say, Oh, well, West Ham appointed a new manager and look how they're backing him. Right, well, first things first, much easier to buy for West Ham than for Liverpool. Like, let's be honest, of the players West Ham have signed this summer, Guido Rodriguez as a an upgrade on Endo, who wasn't good enough to begin with, is probably the only one that gets in our team. Kilman doesn't get in over Virgil, Tadebo, Tadebo doesn't get in over Ibu. Somerville certainly doesn't get get into our team. Uh, Fulcrug doesn't get into our team. Like It's easier to buy when you're a mid-table club looking to make the jump to Europa League than it is when you're a Champions League team looking to make the jump to Champions. And if we were to be really honest with that West Ham squad that people seem to be falling in love with and calling them top four contenders, there are... Other than Rodriguez, and that's only because it's a weakness in our team, there are two players in that entire squad that could start for us. One is Lucas Piquetta, who's facing a significant ban, and the other is Mo Kudus. And that's it. No one else in that West Ham team gets a look in at Liverpool. It's harder for us to go and buy. It's why we were looking at Zuba Mendy. We're looking at the best of the best. We're not looking at marginal improvements we're looking at players that can come in and play at the very highest level immediately and it does make it hard for us and the teams below us while Spurs and Villa have definitely improved this summer while Newcastle will be improved they haven't improved nearly enough to close the gap that there was between them and us last season in my opinion and when I look at the two teams that finished above us City have definitely gotten worse. They sold Alvarez, who was hugely important for them. And they've brought in a winger who's very talented, but very unproven. And is basically just a promotion from one of their many academies. And Arsenal have signed Calafiori, who's excellent. And I would have loved us to get him. But they already had the best defensive record in the league. So I'm not sure how much it actually improves them. So I don't see that they've opened a gap on us going one way and the others have closed the gap going the other way. They'll have closed the gap, but not to the extent where I'm worried that they'll finish above us. I don't need a VPN. I've got nothing to hide. (laughs) This is what I used to tell myself before I hooked up with LibertyShield.com. Not only is my home internet now fully encrypted, but I can now access all the websites I want whenever I want, and do so from absolutely anywhere. As a Liverpool fan, I love to know I can now watch every match, regardless of whether it's on UK TV or not. My Liberty Shield VPN makes sure nothing is blocked and guarantees me super-fast streaming speed throughout that match. 
you can get connected right now with their software package, which includes a 48-hour no-obligation free trial and instant access to their apps for Apple, Android, Fire TV, PC, Mac and Android TV. Or go a step further like I have and get one of their pre-configured VPN routers. These small but powerful devices allow you to easily connect every device in your home to VPN, making it the perfect solution for smart TVs, Mac boxes and games consoles. Visit libertyshield.com today and use coupon code AIVPN25 to get 25% off at checkout. No, me neither. I, I don't see any of the teams who finish below third catching any of the top three. Simple as that. I think they're all way off. Uh, that you can improve the team more or, you know, even if Liverpool were to get a little bit worse or whatever, there's still an enormous gap, not just about quality, but about consistency. And this is, you know, we've come back to this year after year over the last half decade, basically. A lot of the other teams, a lot of the other probably supporters of teams or journalists of teams or writers of just general transfer stuff do not appreciate the gap between the 68 points that fourth place got and the 82 that Liverpool got. It's not just that number of 14 points. Like you To get that extra 14 points in the same number of games is ridiculously hard. And that's on a poor-ish finish for Liverpool. Yep. We've been at the 85 to 95 level for ages. Man City over the last seven years have averaged 91 points. They won the title last season with an average season for them, not yeah. a good season. But they, a lot of people still cannot quite comprehend how insanely consistent you need to be to get into that position. This is why two years ago, never had any likelihood or possibility or confidence that Arsenal genuinely would be in a title fight. They'd never got it's any... below coach. average that year and still won the league. Yeah. Well, they finished 89, like, I think, that year. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't want to go into too much of it, but I did a, a big preview for Arsenal coming into this new season. Last season, they were good. Like, we've, we've been over this. They were really yeah. good. They did well. They won 28 of their 38 games. They finished with 89 points, which is one point off their best ever season. And that's not even as good as an average Manchester City season. Yeah. like it, it's It's very difficult to comprehend how insanely good you need to be. And none of those teams below us, Villa, Tottenham, Chelsea, Newcastle, Man United, none of those have anywhere near the consistency in their squad or in their no. managers to get where they need to be to challenge Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City. There's, there's just no discussion there. Unless one of those three teams completely implodes, has like internal fights going on, two players demand exits, or maybe you lose all four key players down the spine through injuries. Other than that, there's just no chance. Here's the other thing as well, right? So we, we see people talk about, you know, Villa got Champions League last year. Spurs just missed out. Toon got Champions League the year before. So did United. And so on and so forth. And these, these are big threats to us. But like you said, we got 82 points last year. Okay, so we finished nine points off top. We only took 12 from the last available 24 points. So we left points on the table at the end of last season. Losing at home to Palace, drawing away to a dreadful United, losing away to a dreadful Everton, drawing away to a mediocre West, ha West Ham team. The Villa draw, I can accept. They finished in the top four. The others, they're bad results for us. And... Really and truly, those results, United home, Luton away, those are all bad results for us. Drawing home and away with United, drawing away to Luton, losing at home to Palace, losing away to Everton and drawing away to West Ham are all bad results for us. There's more improvement that we can make just by winning the games that we should win. And when people talk about these other clubs and their capability of getting top four, let's remember, like you said, Villa finished last season on 68 points. Spurs on 66. There is no evidence yet that they're capable of more than that. 
Certainly no evidence that they're capable of 14 and 16 points, respectively. More than that. The year before, Toon got fourth with 71. United got third with 75. The season before that, Chelsea got third with six, with 74. And Spurs got fourth with 71. And the season before that, United finished second with 74. And Chelsea finished fourth with 67. None of those teams have shown they're capable of getting to 80. However, if you look at us over the last six, seven years, 18, 19, 97 points. 19, 20, 99 points. 2021, we had finished with 69 points because we had no centre-backs for half a season. 21-22, 92 points. 22-23, we drop off to 67. But we bounced back last year to 82. But that wasn't a massive improvement for us. That was just us bouncing back to below our optimal level. We have three seasons finishing with 10 points more than that. None of the rest of the teams can suggest that. We've got three seasons since the beginning of 1819 with over 90 points. The only other club to get over 90 points is Man City. Not even Arsenal can point to a 90-point season, let alone 92, 97 or 99. And yes, Jürgen is gone, but it's massively disrespectful to the group of players that were there to suggest that Jürgen was working miracles with the best goalkeeper to ever play in the Premier League, the best right-back to ever play in the Premier League, the best centre-back to ever play in the league. The guy who was undeniably the best left back in the league for a number of years. A guy who was undeniably the best holding midfielder in the league for a couple of years. A guy who's the best wide forward the league has ever seen. And another one who was the best player in the league the year we won the title and got robbed of his player of the year award. Like, they're great, great players. There's a significant argument that in an all-time Premier League eleven, Allison, Trent, Virgil, and Mo are all obvious picks. Obvious picks. No other manager at any time in the history of the Premier League had four players that you would say were obvious picks for an all-time Premier League eleven. None of them. Not Ferguson with any of his teams. Not Wenger with any of his teams. Not Mourinho, not Pep, not Carlo, none of them. So the idea that Jürgen was performing miracles simply isn't rooted in reality. He had the best group of players. We had a better team than City in 1819 and in 21-22. And we didn't win the league. So this idea that Arna Slot can't come in and get those four who are still there and all still brilliant playing at their best level and the players that have been brought in to replace those who've gone playing at their best capable level. Dominic Sabozlai is a better footballer than Jordan Henderson. It's not even close. Alexis McAllister is a better footballer than Ginny Wijnaldum. And I'm the president of the Ginny fan club. But Alexis is a better footballer. Now we don't have a Sadio in this squad we don't have a Bobby. But we've got much better depth in attack now in Darwin, Diaz, Gakbo and Jota than we had back in 1819 or 1920. Ibu is a better centre-back than either Joel Matip or Joe Gomez. So the holes we have are defensive midfield and left-back. But there's possibilities for everything else to be as good or better than it was back then because Trent is older, entering his prime, and while Virgil has, has dropped off a little bit from his peak, the improvement of Kanate over what was there and Trent over Trent from five, six years ago should balance that out. Now, the decline is in Robbo. That's what we need to address in the defence. Same in midfield. You've got two upgrades and a decline from Fabinho to Endo. That's the other position we need to upgrade. But the attack as a whole... 
has more capability to score goals than the previous attack did because the depth behind it was Jordan Shakiri and Divock Origi. So the notion that we're about to fall into the precipice, I don't know where it comes from. I look at the squad and I think two players puts us right next to City as favourites to win the league. And given they've gotten worse from last year, they will buy, no question. But who they buy and whether they fit in straight away, there's a history with Pep of players not really working out till year two. I think City are there for us if we go and attack the two positions that we need to fill. And even with the squad we have, <clears throat> Robbo is still capable of some good performances. Costa showed good form last year until he got hurt. And Joe Gomez was very good last year. So we can patch together the left-back position. The holding midfield one is the one that concerns me because I think the best option is Curtis Jones, but he can't stay fit. And the next option appears to be Ryan Gravenberg, who's afraid to tackle people. And if you look at the goal that Sevilla scored against us at the weekend, it was from him shitting himself in a tackle. That's the position that really concerns me, but we have tried to address it. They clearly know that's an issue. So, like, I am, I don't think we'll win the league this year, but like you, I think third is the floor for this team. And I think there's a real crack at second to be had without doing anything. Because I don't think Arsenal are particularly brilliant. I mean, like like you said, Arsenal haven't added much winners to their side. Their 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 improvement as it stands is going to have to come through coaching. It's going to have to come through all the things that we've just spoken about that Anna Slot's going to have to do. Um, but without the freshness, without the new ideas, without the new uh, background to above the team and around the team, you know, the whole new atmosphere around the team, the squad, basically. So. It's a difficult job for Arteta to improve that unless he's got some new tactical aspect he's trying to introduce this year. Otherwise, it is going to be the same in terms of personnel, the same in terms of approach. And can you make them better at what they do? Can you add better, mm. <clears throat> excuse me, better replications, better patterns of play? Can the players who underperformed last year, who are regularly in the starting lineup, Martinelli, Martinelli. yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, if they can improve, then that's obviously where you're your results and your goals improvement can come from. That can lead to points improvements, no question, but there's no guarantee of it. Never never would be. Um, same as for slot, same as everybody else. You have to actually be capable of doing that coaching uh, and getting that improvement out of the players. So I don't see Arsenal dropping off enormously myself, but nor do I ever have seen this squad of Arsenal being better than Liverpool's. Like I, no, I, that's, I maintain that Arsenal only finished above Liverpool last year because of the use of the squad. Like we did have some injuries, but I think we didn't utilize the squad as well as we could have done. No, when we had the squad, basically. Yeah, I fully uh, agree. That's what I'm saying. I don't think we were using players to their best capabilities last year. And look, that, 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 was, that was that was a theme of Klopp's uh, style of management. Let's be honest. Oh yeah, hundred percent. But the other thing with Arsenal is look how heavily reliant they were on set piece goals last year. Like we went over it towards the end of last season, just how many goals they were getting from set pieces. And now the rules on set pieces are being changed. And I think it's very clearly because teams were complaining about the antics of Arsenal. Because some of them look very specifically targeted at Ben White. <laughs> so I, I don't know if he was being facetious or what, but I saw Brundish tweet, tweet out that if the set piece rules for this season had been in place last season, the goals it would have cost Arsenal, they'd have finished on 71 points. Now, they're not going to drop off by 18 points. But it's very possible they drop off by five or six. And I think there's an easy four to five points improvement for us on last season without doing anything. And that's not enough to win the league, but it'll get us, it'll get us second quite comfortably. I, I I think we'll finish second this year, being honest. Because I also think, I believe we will make signings. I think we'll get one or two, not counting Mamardashvili, before the window closes. And I think they will immediately start working on something for January. So if they don't get that number six position sorted now, 
I think they'll start working on something for January. And by January, there are two players who I do think we would have considered this summer who are injured and therefore couldn't be considered, but they'll be back playing. One of them will have half a season under his belt. The other will have two to three months. Check to Kure, and more pertinently, Bubakar Kamara, who I would be near certain would have been the target for the number six position this summer if it wasn't for the torn ACL. If he comes back in like, he's back in October, I believe. So if Kamara's back next summer, yeah. Yeah, but like we we could start looking at that oh, yeah, yeah. In, sure. you know, in January to see see they like, kick the tires on it, see if there's a possibility. I think we'll look at those players in January if we don't get it solved in the summer. But I still think there's a good chance we will get it solved this summer. I think the, the media silence from the club is quite telling. They don't want anything getting out anywhere because of what happened with Zudamendi. I I think it I think second is there for us as things stand because as I say like Arsenal yeah they, they look there should be improvement from Martinelli but are we really seeing Arsenal score ninety one and get twenty nine again do we re- do you see ninety three ninety four ninety five points in this Arsenal team because I don't but when I look at City. And I look at 91 points and I look at what you've said about, you know, their average across seven years. And I look at the last two seasons particularly, and I think they just did what they needed to do to win the league and no more than that. The, the, like we talked about this before. I think the only way you beat City to the title is to just blow them out of the water in the first 15 to 18 games, build a lead and then hold on to it and hope that they just give up. I think they gave up the year we won the league because we were so dominant through the first half of that season. And they were like, these fuckers are never losing a game. <laughs> They're never losing a game. So there wasn't worth the, the effort to chase us. But I think if it was an Arsenal and they were like five points clear with 15 games to go, like there's a world in which City just win 14 and draw one. And I don't think Arsenal are capable of holding off, holding them off. I haven't seen evidence that they are. So I can see Arsenal having a little bit of a drop off. I can see having us having a little bit of improvement without doing anything purely by better fitness luck and better use of the players. And like you mentioned, not being wide open defensively and constantly being a goal down in games. I, I think we improve on last season's points total, to be honest. And I think they'll have a drop off. So we should probably. Go into predictions. So who's winning the league? Barring points, deduction, penalties and all that kind of stuff, Man City. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in the same place. I think City will win the league. So, um, right. It's possible the Premier League gets five Champions League spots for 25-26. So give me, give me your Two through five. Uh, Liverpool second, and I've gone for Arsenal third. That's what I've got as well. Uh, I've been backwards and forwards over fourth and fifth at the minute, and still pending transfers. Um, I've got Spurs fourth and Newcastle fifth. Okay, so we have one difference. I've got Spurs fourth. I've got Villa fifth. Um, I know Toon not having Europe will help them. But I just think Villa, I think they've got a better manager. And I just think when I look at them back to for, back to front, with Botman missing half the season potentially, I do just prefer that Villa team. I think they've got better depth as well. And I don't trust Eddie Howe to keep those players fit. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if they have another season that's just been wrecked by injuries. They haven't added enough depth this summer this summer to make up for it. I mean, they've done very little this summer. Asula comes in, it's not really ready for them. Lloyd Kelly comes in, grand, like, but he's just grand. There's not a whole lot more about him. I, I think they've still got work to do. I think they will do more, but yeah, we, we'll we'll do kind of finalised predictions at the end of the transfer window. This is just more of a, of a for now thing. 
But yeah, I've got Villa over Toon. Um, so I've got Toon sixth. Who would you have sixth taking, say, the Europa League spot? Um, I think United. Chelsea definitely have the squad for it, the better squad for it. Villa already have shown they have a, a team set up for it. But as I mentioned, I think uh, Villa do drop off a little bit this year with Champions League football. So I will go United just based on eventually, if you throw enough, something's got to stick a tiny bit higher on the wall. Hey guys, it's Eddie Gibbs from Anfield Index here. I hope you're enjoying this podcast and I'm sorry to call time on the show before it ends. In the current climate, it's tougher than ever before to offer podcasts for free. At Anfield Index, we produce over 75 free shows every month, which I'm confident is unparalleled in the LFC sphere. Whilst we'd love to offer everything for free, the production costs now make this impossible. That said, we don't want to follow the model of other channels and lock all of our content behind a paywall. So what we've decided to do is to continue offering every show for free, but cut that offering to 30 minutes on our longer shows. So to get all of our shows in full and enjoy the best of everything we have to offer, we really hope you'll consider supporting the channel and signing up at AnfieldIndexPro.com. For about the price of one cup of coffee, you'll get every podcast in full with zero ads. You'll also get access to our LFC VIP community, where you can enjoy live podcasts, engage with our podcasters, and chat with other Reds in real time. So that website again, AnfieldIndexPro.com. Join today. This podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network.